Math 13, 14, Tyler Junior College, section 1.5, quadratic equations, video 9 of 10. In the previous video, we used the quadratic formula, which we got from completing the square on a general quadratic equation, and we solved a quadratic equation. Uh, getting it started was pretty easy. The trickiest part, in my opinion, was cleaning up the answer at the end. Namely, because we got a square root that required some simplifying. My intention in the previous video was to do two examples, but we were getting kind of long, so I stopped it. And we'll do this example in this video, along with a little bit of commentary about solutions after this example. I invite you to pause the video and try to solve this equation, parentheses 4x plus 3, close parentheses, times parentheses, x plus 2, close parentheses, equals 3. Just a little heads up, you have a lot of work to do before you even begin the quadratic formula, because the quadratic formula requires that your equation have this form. So pause the video, give it a try, and then we'll see what happens. Did you pause the video? I hope you tried it, because I'm about to bust this one open. All right, so let's get this one started. Why is this not ready for the quadratic formula? There's two things wrong with it. Number one, the right side is not zero. That's pretty easy to fix. We can just move the three over. But the left side is factored, and the quadratic formula does not say start out being factored. So we need to fix the factorization on the left and the three on the right. Factorization is easy to fix, we just have to multiply all this out. Foil, if you will. I'll spare you the details. If you foil this, you should get 4x squared plus 11x plus 6. That's equal to 3. But I need it equal to 0. So let's empty out the right side by subtracting 3 from both sides. And we get 4x squared plus 11x plus 3 is equal to zero. Now, I honestly do not remember how this one works out. I made up this example yesterday. Uh, you may have noticed that I changed clothes between videos, um, uh, I think it was six and seven. <laughs> so I don't remember how this turns out, but that's okay, because on your, if you're doing a quadratic equation, you won't know how it turns out either. You just jump into it. All right, so what's the A, the B, and the C? A is 4, the B is 11, the C is 3. When you set up the quadratic formula, you can write it with parentheses instead of letters. So negative parentheses, plus or minus the square root of parentheses squared, minus 4, parentheses, parentheses, and, and on the bottom, 2, parentheses. And then insert the values. The A is 4. The A goes after the 2 and after the 4. The B is 11. The B goes at the beginning of the fraction and the beginning of the square root. The C is 3. The C goes at the end of the square root. And now let's clean this up. Remember, there are four spots that you can work simultaneously. The first spot is the beginning of the fraction. That's just negative 11, plus or minus. Another spot is in the denominator. 2 times 4 is 8. And then under the square root, you can work each multiplication problem separately. But I'm going to show you a way to be even more efficient. I'm going to eventually do a subtraction problem. I just need to know what's on both sides of it. So instead of setting up the subtraction problem here, I'm going to set it up above this square root with this c over. On the left side of the subtraction is 11 squared, which is 121. On the right side of the subtraction is 4 times 4 times 3. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 3 is 48. So we can just work the subtraction problem here and import the result down here. 121 minus 48. Let's see, 11 minus 8 is 3, you have to borrow 1, and 11 minus 4 is 7. 
Is that the correct difference? Yes. So under the square root, you get 73. Every quadratic formula problem will work the same way up until here. Get it ready, pull out the numbers, stick them into the quadratic formula, and then slowly chip away by working individual pieces until you get here. Something on the left of the plus minus, something under the square root, something in the denominator. What happens next is 100% dependent on the square root. What can we do with the square root of 73? Hmm. Well, we can't flat out square root it. It would be 8 point something. I don't know off the top of my head. I've had a guess. I'd say about 8.59. But now I'm curious. I've got a calculator around here somewhere. I, I don't need to square root the 73, but I'm just kind of curious how close I was. What did I say? 8.59? It's about 8.54. Not too bad for a guess. But anyway, when you get to the square root, the first thing you try to do is do it. And if you can do it, great, move forward. If not, then you, can, then you try to do part of it. Can we do part of it? In other words, can we take the square root of 73 and rewrite it as the product of two square roots? So can you think of a multiplication problem equal to 73? You can't, because 73 is prime. How do you know that? Well, don't, don't divide it by 1 because you're not really breaking down the 73, so that, don't ever use 1. It should be pretty obvious it's not divisible by 2 because it's odd. You could check to see if it's divisible by 3, but you would get a decimal. If it's not even, it's not going to be divisible by 4, but you could check. You could divide it by 4 and get a decimal. And you may think this is going to take forever, except it won't, and here's why. If you went all the way up to 73 divided by 8, you would get 9.125, which tells me that 8's not a factor. But if you tried 9, 73 divided by 9, hold on, 73, come on calculator, have this calculator, this piece of junk. 73 divided by 9, you would get 9.81 repeating. If you're checking to see if a, a number can be divided by something, start small. What should happen, and I'm going to write some of these. 73 divided by 3 is 24.3 uh, repeating. 73 divided by 4, I shouldn't need a calculator for that, is 18.25, and so on. But what should happen is if you start dividing by small numbers and make them larger, Eventually, the smaller factor will no longer be the smaller factor. 3 is smaller than 24.3 repeating. 4 is smaller than 18.25 repeating. 8 is smaller than 9.125. But in the next move, 9 is not smaller than 8.1 repeating. Once the smaller factor transitions into the larger factor, you can stop. If it didn't work up until there, it's not going to work from that point forward. Why? Because if it did work, one of the smaller factors would have already worked up here. So there is a way to determine if a, if a relatively small number is, a, uh, is, a per, is uh, divisible by anything by simply dividing by small enough numbers until the smaller number becomes the larger number. And if nothing worked, then you stop. 73 is prime. We can't break it down, which means we can't simplify the square root. So what do we do? The answer is you simplify as much as possible and there's nothing left to do. These are your answers. So the annoying thing about the quadratic formula is knowing when to stop. I can think of five scenarios on how the quadratic formula can conclude. So to wrap up this discussion about the quadratic formula, I'm going to erase this, and I'm not going to set up five examples, but I'm going to set up five concluding scenarios. So we'll call this possible conclusions of the quadratic formula. Possible conclusions of the quadratic formula. And there are, I want to say five of them. Number one, the square root is doable. 
meaning that you can actually do the square root. So for example, we could wind up somewhere like this, uh, negative five plus or minus the square root of 81 over two. If you gave me enough time, I could build a quadratic equation that would take us here, but that's not the point. The point is if you got here, you can do the square root of 81. What is the square root of 81? Nine. Do me a favor, whatever you're doing, look right now. Don't do this. Square root of 81 is the square root of nine. Stop. When you do a square root, it's not a square root anymore. I can't tell you how many times I see people do something like the square root of 81 is equal to the square root of nine. No, once you've done the square root, let it go. The square root of 81 is just nine. Now, as a consequence of that, the terms in the numerator are like terms. I can combine them. That means I should split up the plus minus. Negative five plus nine over two, negative five minus nine over two, and then finish each answer. The first answer simplifies to four over two. The second one simplifies to negative 14 over two. Both of those will divide. I get two and negative seven as my solutions. So it's kind of ironic, the better the square root behaves, the more work you have to do afterwards. The second possible outcome, outcome is the square root cannot simplify. That's what we just saw in the previous problem. When we had negative 11 plus or minus the square root of 73 over eight, if you can't do a thing with the square root, you stop. It's over, there's nothing left to do. So again, a little irony here, the worse the square root, the better, because we get to stop sooner. Now in between doable and can't do a thing is partially, uh, we'll say the square root can be simplified, as opposed to flat out being done. Technically speaking, when you do the square root of 81, you are simplifying it as much as possible, but there are square roots that you can simplify but not do completely. For example, if we had uh, negative six plus or minus the square root of, let's say, 45 over two, we can simplify the square root of 45 by breaking off a square root of nine. And normally I would simplify it outside of the solution, but let's just move it left to right. I can break a square root of nine off of the square, uh, square root of 45 and leave the square root of five behind. And then I can do the square root of nine and get negative six plus or minus uh, three over the square root of five, excuse me. Negative six plus or minus three square root of five over two. Now, there's still issues about simplifying the fraction. Uh, in this case, I can't factor, well, I can factor out a three, but that wouldn't reduce with the two. However, I can split this into two fractions across the plus minus, right? Negative six over two plus or minus three square root of five over two. And I can reduce the first fraction and get a solution of negative three plus or minus three square root of five over two. But my point is, a third type of conclusion for the quadratic formula is a square root that can be partially simplified, but not completely simplified. That, to me, is the worst case scenario, because you have to A, know how to simplify the square root, and B, be on the lookout for simplifying the fraction afterwards. The fourth possible conclusion is a very specific one when you get the square root of zero. So for example, if we had something like 18, plus or minus the square root of zero over six. The square root of zero is zero. Technically, this falls under the first category. I did the square root, but it has a particular outcome. Because I can do the square root, I can and should do both the addition and subtraction. So 18 plus zero over six and 18 minus zero over six. But both of these equal the same thing. 18 over 6, both of which reduce to 3. So the reason this gets its own mention is because you get the same answer twice. If this were a question in an online homework platform, you would just enter the answer once.
There's a consequence of the answer showing up twice. We'll discuss that when we get to chapter 3. So what's the fifth outcome? If you have the square root of a negative, and technically this falls under 3 because you can probably simplify it. For example, if we had something like, uh, let's go with uh, 10 plus or minus the square root of negative 20 over 2, then you have to not only simplify the square root, but deal with the negative. Now we've dealt with the square root of negative 20 before, so I'm not going to beat around the bush, but the square root of negative 20 will simplify into 2i square root of 5. Go watch the first video series if you need some elaboration on that. And we can split this into two fractions and reduce. And honestly, when you can split and reduce both fractions, you can do it mentally and just write the results. For example, one of the fractions would be 10 over 2, which reduces to 5. And the other fraction would be 2i squared of 5 over 2. The 2's would cancel and leave an i squared of 5. So be prepared for uh, five possible results to the quadratic formula, uh, where you can flat out do the square root and hence take it all the way to two final solutions. Uh, you can't do a thing with the square root, so you stop really quickly. Worst case scenario, you can simplify the square root and as a consequence, carefully simplify the fractions. Fourth case, you get a square root of zero, which simply means that you can do the problem, but you're only going to get one answer twice. And the fifth case is when you have a square root of a negative, which means you're going to have an I in your solution.